Hi, I'm Shannon Mouton Gray, Managing Director at McKinnon Associates, and thank you for joining us for this month's Tips in 20 webinar, Eight Ways to Manage Up, 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 Up and Away. We here at McKinnon Associates believe these little presentations um, in 20 minutes or less can help people get some information that they can put into practice immediately. They're small little tips that we hope can make your work life and your life in general better. So thank you for joining me today. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I want to go ahead and give a shout out to my production team, Bria and Stephanie, the interns. Hey. Hi. Thank you, ladies. Um, again, today's presentation, eight ways to manage up, up, up and away. That's with your profession and career, that is. <laughs> so let's begin at the beginning. What is managing up? Simply put, it's the process of managing your relationship with your boss. It is consciously working with your boss to achieve optimal results for you, your boss, and the organization. Good results for you mean good results for your boss mean good results for the organization. Now, <clears throat> this is tricky here, folks. Your job really has nothing to do with you. Personally, that is. Someone probably had the position before you and someone will probably have it after you. If you take nothing else away from today, remember this. It ain't about you. Repeat after me. It, it ain't, ain't about, about you. you. Thank you, ladies. Let me clarify, though. Managing up is not to be confused with brown nosing, corporate climbing, game playing, or any other twisted mind games that you've heard of. The true key to managing up is to remember your primary responsibility is to do the job they want it done, not how you want to do it. You want to begin by learning your boss. What are some of his or her likes and dislikes? Do they have any pet peeves, idiosyncrasies, or things you should be aware of? You know, some people don't like it if folks show up two seconds late for meetings or don't like it if people keep a junky desk. What about your boss? While this kind of information may seem trivial, it can be, but ignoring it could poison the relationship and cause short-term damage with long-term consequences. And you want to make sure you know what's important to your boss. You want to understand your boss's position in the organization and their job requirements. And if you don't know, then ask. You want to be able to connect with your boss the way he or she prefers. Is your boss a reader? Then put it in writing. Is your boss a listener? Then talk to them. If he or she is a visual person, then use images to convey your messages. And let me say here at McKinney, our president is a, um, a little, <clears throat> shall we say, obsessive about email. Would you all say that, ladies? Yes, she, um, if she sends an email, she wants an immediate response of some sort. She wants to know it's been read and understood. And so all emails that come from her, we respond, even if it's a simple got it, okay, on it, reading, something, we, we need to respond in some sort of way. So find out what works for your boss. Oh, and let me just say here real quick, um, I'm using the term boss as kind of a generic term for your manager, supervisor, coach, team lead, anyone who you are responsible to, boss is kind of that generic term, okay? Now, you also want to make your boss aware of projects that you, that you and your team are working on, especially if they're going well. And let me say for a second, this does not mean bragging or boasting about how great, grand, and wonderful you are. Your organization does not need a Donald Trump. It means being deliberate and thoughtful in your communications to demonstrate your commitment to the organization. Remember, what? It ain't about you. Is it, ladies? Nope. For instance, you can send a congratulatory email to your team and copy your boss. 
This draws attention to the success of your project as well as your leadership and teamwork skills. You can also ask your manager to lead or work on new and different projects, something outside of your normal responsibilities. Stretch yourself, push yourself, do something new. Now there is an asterisk here. While planning the team retreat is great and can be a lot of fun, it may not bring the long-term career results that you're looking for with new projects. For instance, a company I used to work at, a colleague of mine, uh, she planned the blood drive, company-wide blood drive for three years in a row. And during the event, the CEO every year would thank her by name. She'd done such a wonderful job on the blood drive. She was invaluable to planning the blood drive, yada, yada, yada about the blood drive. However, two months after the third blood drive, they let her go. Yeah, you want to do new and different projects that relate to the bottom line. You want to have a positive impact on the organization's goals and objectives. Those are the new and different projects you want to be a part of. It's also good to take an active interest in the organization by continuing to learn about it, the products, services, clients, and anything else that it's doing. You want to participate in meetings and brainstorming sessions. You want to share insights and ask thoughtful questions. You can also read any quarterly or annual, annual reports and pay attention to what's going on in other departments and how they may impact the work that you're doing and how the work you're doing can impact them. Now, folks, let's be clear. Surprises are great for birthday parties, bridal showers, and especially wedding proposals. However, not so good for your boss. While no one likes mistakes, in projects they happen all the time, it's called life. The bigger the project, the higher the likelihood of mistakes. The bigger concern for your boss, to be quite honest, was that you knew about the problem and didn't let anyone know about it. You didn't send an email, a text, put up smoke signals, sound a foghorn, nada. You went radio silent. Surprises are easy to avoid if you report regularly on important milestones and issues of concern as they arise. You want to highlight emerging or potential problems and suggest possible solutions. And our last managing up tip avoid the office politics and this is a tough one because we want to try strive to treat everyone fairly and do our best to check our personal luggage at the door we want to think about our professional brands at all times we want to be known as the stellar employee not the office gossip commit yourself to staying professional and this last piece of wisdom it's not a bonus it's just a reminder folks Managing down equates to managing departments and employees, while managing up means managing relationships with your boss and your colleagues. Oh, we have a commercial. We have a commercial. Uh, here at McKinney, we are hosting our very first Twitter chat on Wednesday, April 6th at 2 p.m. That's exactly seven days from today, the exact same time. I expect to see or at least tweet all of you there. Um, please follow at MCKPR and then search for social justice chat and you'll find us there. Great. Well, folks, it's now time for the Q&A portion of the program. So please place your tray tables in the upright position and hand your trash to the attendant as they make a final pass through the cabin. And don't forget to type your questions into the Q&A box. So, <coughs> excuse me, let me get a little water. Sorry about that, I'm getting over uh, cold, folks. Um, as always, we got some questions from Twitter, I believe, right? Yep. Yep. Um, to kind of get things going and keep us started. So, here we go. Why is it important to learn and understand the boss's position and job requirements? Thanks, Twitter. Um, this is important because um, your 
boss is the person that will make the recommendation whether or not you get a promotion. They'll make the recommendation whether or not you get the bonus. They'll make the recommendation whether or not you get to do this, that, or the other thing. So you want to work with them, not against them. You want to support them in their projects and help them succeed. Again, not brown nosing, but working with them, having a good collaborative relationship. Next, do you have any tips for a new employer on how best to learn the boss's pet peeves, preferences, and expectations? Ask. Find out from someone who's been there a while and ask. Talk to someone who's sitting next to you in the queue. Talk to someone who's been there a little while longer. Ask. Talk to the hiring person. Talk to someone in HR. Ask. And if all else fails, pay attention. If your boss sees someone come into a meeting late and the boss makes a face or grunts or gives a heavy sigh, that's probably a hint that they don't like people coming in late. Observation is always a great way to learn. How can you repair or go forward from a bad relationship with your boss? Ooh, um, I'm, remind, I'm reminded of Robert Downey Jr. here, the actor. Um, my intern, the interns are too young to realize and remember this. Years ago, Robert Downey Jr. was a, <coughs> excuse me, was a, um, a drug addict. He went to jail. And when he got out, people wouldn't hire him. The insurance was going to be too high. They weren't sure if he was going to show up late, if he was going to know his lines, if he was going to be ready to do the work. Well, he kept trying, kept working, kept trying, kept working more, kept working more and more, kept working more and more and more. And so eventually you keep working. You keep working, you stay on top of your game, you get better at your game. And people eventually forget. And history becomes what? History, and people forget. Um, now, Robert Downey Jr. is the lead in two major franchises in Hollywood, Sherlock Holmes and Iron Man. How many people actually remember he used to be a drug addict and went to jail? How are I doing on time, folks? Okay. Got a thumbs up. What would you do if your method for getting something done is clearly more effective, more effective than your boss's methods? Uh, yeah, remember, it ain't about you. It really, it ain't about you. Four words to remember when you work for someone else. It ain't about you. While there may be better ways to build a mousetrap, while there may be more effective and cost efficient ways to build a mousetrap. Some people are kind of stuck where they are. This is how we've always done it. This is how we're always going to do it. This is has this has always gotten us the results that we want. Um, new ideas can be a little scary for folks, especially if it's something that's going to have a direct impact on the bottom line. Um, so what I would advise is in the heat of the situation, don't bring it up. But after the situation, or before the next time you get to do something, that in-between time, bring up a new way, a different way. Have you considered, let's try this. If doing X, Y, and Z takes four months and costs us $250,000, let's try X, Y, Z tweaked a little bit. It may only take three months. It could possibly save us $50,000. That will get people's attention. But coming up with ideas in the heat of the moment, you're just going to be seen as a troublemaker and someone who's not willing to be a team player. So you want to come up with new ideas and new ways of doing things in between time. Um, again, in that way, people don't feel threatened either. Remember, if you want someone to change, you have to make it beneficial for them to change and show and demonstrate the benefits to them. And our last Twitter question. What insight do you have on being proactive in the workplace while not overstepping your boundaries? Two words, honesty, transparency. Be open and honest, folks. If you want to work with someone, let them know. There's a project going on in, a, in another department you want to work on. Let people know. Let your boss know. Let your colleagues know. And then work with your boss 
to let their peer know. Again, there's a way to do, there's a right way to do anything and everything. And it's a matter of finding out that way for your particular organization. I remember years ago, two decades ago, when I had just started working, I was brand new in the world, work world that is. And this woman I was working with, a peer, was going on Christmas vacation. So instead of going to my boss, I went directly to her boss over my cop over my peers head to her boss and said, you know, I know Susie's going out of town for a couple of weeks. I'd like to work with you and help you out. Well, while the idea was good and the, it was good thought behind it, it didn't quite come out that way. First off, my peer thought I was trying to go around her back and take her job, which I wasn't. And then my boss was like, Shannon, you've got X, Y, and Z to do. You don't have time to help anyone else. And I was like, but, but, but yeah, mm -mm, it didn't work. It ended up being a mess. And while I did end up helping the woman out a little, it didn't help me out in the long run the way I had wanted it. So again, honesty and transparency is always good. Um, do I have any other questions? Nope, I think we're good. Great. So in the script, glasses, we're good now. Thank you for joining us for this month's Tips in 20. McKinney and Associates has practiced public relations with a conscience for more than 25 years. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, as well as online at mckpr.com. I'm Shannon Mouton Gray. Thanks again for joining us this month for our topic on managing up, up, up and away. And be sure and join us next month in April for seven business principles we can learn from flea markets. And yes, I do mean more than learning how to scratch. Thanks again and see you around the interwebs.